Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and remember to subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon. Tesla just had their 2021 annual shareholder meeting. I thought we could just discuss a few of the highlights, but mainly focusing on the new information that we've been presented and see what inferences we may be able to draw from there. Elon shows us a graph of Tesla's record vehicle deliveries from 2016 with a compound annual growth rate of an astounding 71%. Elon thinks that they can maintain that growth into the future, i.e. Elon just said that they think Tesla can maintain a 71% growth rate. 71% growth is absolutely crazy, especially when we're dealing with exponentials. For example, if Tesla achieved 1 million deliveries this year, 1 million probably won't happen, but it does make the math easy. Well, at 50% growth by 2030, would be up to 35 million units a year. But at 71% growth, it would be 125 million a year. That's a big difference. Elon says if they can get the chips, he feels confident they can achieve that, or at least something above 50% for quite a while. We haven't had an updated growth projection since the last investor meeting, aka Battery Day, where we were told a target of around 50%. Do you get it? In the space of just one year, Tesla have already increased their growth target. It seems that Tesla is more confident on what they can achieve now than only a year ago, and potentially significantly more confident. In addition to that, this year has almost been 100% growth from last year when we were initially told of this 50% growth target. In exponentials, if the first year doubles, then it makes a significantly bigger difference. This tells me that even Tesla are doing better than Tesla thought they could. And of course, this is despite all the other issues they've been facing with supply chains. Unless, of course, it's just some more sandbagging. Elon thinks there's a good chance of the Model Y becoming the best-selling vehicle by revenue next year, overtaking the Toyota Corolla, which we've also been told in the past. Just some very quick math, but if the average selling price of a Model Y is twice what the average selling price is of a Corolla, then Elon just said he expects to sell over a million Model Ys next year. But not overly surprising, as we're all kind of expecting that too. He then goes on to say that by 2023, the Model Y will be the best-selling vehicle of any kind, globally, by units sold, which is about 2 million to beat from the Corolla, implying that in 2023, Tesla should have wrapped up the Model Y a further million units. If Tesla do 2 million units in 2022, then through Model Y ramping alone, they should reach 3 million units, of course on top of whatever the Cybertruck does, which we were told should be ramped up in 2023, so possibly a further half a million units there. So maybe 3.5 million units a year by 2023. They just need Berlin and Texas to get online and reach volume production. Elon talks about opening up Tesla FSD for licensing. This is something I've been mentioning lately too. The way Elon mentions it is almost nonchalant relative to what it actually means for the competition. But this technology saves lives and could be deemed as immoral to keep it to yourself as a result. The competition are so lucky to be offered this opportunity as to what could be argued as the largest barrier to entry to the future of transport. Elon's asked about 46 Eddy production in Texas this year, which didn't sound likely, but the Cato Road battery facility is capable of 10 gigawatt hours a year, which might not be far off 150,000 or so Model Ys a year for performance and long range versions. Of course, it sounds likely the battery factory will be operational sometime next year anyway, but basically in the meantime, Cato Road can cover Texas. Not much else mentioned about the 46 Eddy batteries. Maybe we'll hear more about them in the earnings call. Obviously 46 Eddy batteries are a huge element to Tesla's future, so any information on them is valuable. Elon says that they might start scouting for locations next year and not confirmed until 2023. Well, that feels like it's being left a little late. We're assuming this new factory is the Model 2. On the other hand, surely Tesla have likely narrowed down a few locations already and are also likely waiting to hear about the EV tax credit. Elon does say though that he thinks they can do a lot with just Berlin and Austin, and he's probably right. We can't wait to see the potential capacity of these factories. He also says, and expanding in China and Fremont. So Tesla plans to expand Fremont and Shanghai still. In fact, we were told that the Fremont output will eventually increase a further 50% too, taking the capacity very close to 1 million units a year. A number a lot of people think Fremont is capable of, and Elon himself has mentioned in the past. But Tesla are working on improving efficiencies in their manufacturing. I mean, if Tesla can double production speed, then that would have a similar effect as to building twice as many factories, except likely cost significantly less. Elon talks about how Tesla's long-term competitive advantage will be manufacturing, and that in the future, the gigafactories may not be bigger as such, 
but just more efficient. Elon says he thinks that Tesla will make all major variants of a vehicle, one in every significant category, Elon thinks. I don't believe this has ever been disclosed before. Elon has basically just announced a few more models are coming out from Tesla. Some major variants that Tesla are currently missing are a coupe and a convertible, except unlike the Roadster, these would likely be affordable. I assume this would also mean a station wagon. Of course, SUVs and crossovers have become a lot more popular over the years, but bear in mind, this likely won't be your typical station wagon. And a minivan is the other major variant. That is possibly Elon announcing four more models coming from Tesla. But it might not stop there either. They might also offer a larger version of the Model Y, a larger SUV, but still more affordable than a Model X. I think that is likely a large market and something in the opposite direction too, more like a mini crossover compact perhaps. This is a big deal and will now remove more potential niches from any competition. The main market segment Tesla are not likely to address would be the budget market, although they're getting close to it with the Model 2. On the other hand, Tesla may address that market with a service rather than a product aka robo-taxis. Tesla don't need to compromise on the quality of the vehicle in order to save some cost. All Teslas will have decent range and be very safe. Elon's asked, how long will we need to mine for batteries? And Elon says, it will take 20 years to exchange the entire fleet of the world if all cars sold today were electric. And then he goes on to say it might take 30 years or so. Elon talks about how lithium is plentiful, despite how many people worry about the lack of lithium on the planet. And then Elon expands on how Tesla will only use their nickel-based cathode batteries for long range, and then explains how iron is 10 to 100 times more abundant than nickel. Right, just like I've been saying, Tesla are moving over all their batteries to iron, except just long range vehicles. As many of you know, I've been vocal about how important it is to move to iron-based batteries instead of nickel. There's so many advantages, it's really good news that Tesla are taking this route. It basically means a lot more profit, a lot more production, and likely reduced prices, which result in increased demand. Although Elon does add to that, iron-based chemistry is sort of finally at the point where it's competitive on range when combined with an efficient powertrain. Yes, an efficient powertrain. That makes a big difference. Which is why Tesla is so much better utilizing iron-based batteries due to all these extra efficiencies Tesla cars have. The legacy autos are better to invest in new powertrain technology to create a decent enough range with iron batteries compared to spending a fortune in researching nickel batteries. Oops. And okay, sure, there are a lot of other things mentioned too, which I'm sure you all saw, but I felt like these were the ones I most wanted to talk about. But I think everything is looking really good, to be honest, at least on what we were told. I would have liked to have a bit more information on the 4680 Progress, and it would have been nice to hear a bit more about the Model 2. Perhaps a reveal date would have been exciting. And yes, before you comment, this entire time, I've been well aware that Model 2 is not going to be the official name but it's a tidy placeholder that everyone is familiar with, and it's a lot easier than saying Tesla's $25,000 compact car. Although I'm thinking this might not be in production now until 2024. It might have also been nice to finally get an official opening date of the new factories too. Although we do have earnings call this month, so might get some more information then. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.